Hello allemaal, hello everybody. Welcome back to Modern Cottage Books. I'm Selby and today is Spring TBR. And yes, I know that it's technically, spring has already started and I've actually already started reading my Spring TBR, but I'm gonna catch you up because I moved recently and so things have been hectic so I didn't get this done as early as I wanted to. So I've actually read some books for spring in my spring category already. Um, and then I have a bunch that I want to read. So I'm going to talk about the ones that I've already read, which are, and I have my little picture and I'll put up a picture. So these are, I don't know if I've shown this to you before, but this is my reading journal. So every book that I'm reading this year, I'm printing out a little photo of the cover and then sticking it in there and writing about it. So I already have this one, but I'm obviously uh, been a little slow in getting this done. So the first one is The Tale of Truthwater Lake by Emma Carroll. Now this is a, it, this was an interesting one. So it was both historical fiction and future. Um, so it, it was divided, the book was divided between the perspective of one young girl who's, it's like 2032 or something like that, 2036. So it's in the future. So it starts in the future. Um, and then we get flashbacks to the 1950s, early 1950s, I think I remember correctly. Um, and, uh, and this town in England is being flooded. It's, it, the people have been moved out and it's being flooded so that it can become a reservoir. And this young lady also in the 1950s is trying to train to swim across the English Channel and then it's talking about it, the the young lady in the nineteen in the twenty thirties is talking about climate change and and different things. It was actually really interesting. I picked it up just because it was pretty. The cover I thought was interesting, and on the cover it said like Emma Carroll is the best uh, middle grade historical fiction writer. I was like sold. I I've got to try this out. So that's the first one I read. Then I went on to Tulipomania. That's my little picture. It's a big picture. Um, so this was a nonfiction adult book about the tulip mania that happened in the Netherlands in the 1600s. Yeah, 1630s, I think. Um, so if you don't know, the Dutch are really known for tulips. They have loved tulips for a long time. Tulips came to the Netherlands in the like 1610s, and then they just became more and more popular. And in the 1630s, there was this huge explosion of like the just craziness for tulips and tulip bulbs um, were selling for like the price of a house. And so it explains in this book how that happened and why. Um, and also gives you a background of like where tulips came from because they're not native to the Netherlands. They came from the Caucasus Mountains, I think, somewhere over to the east of Turkey. And uh, they came through Turkey. So the Turks liked them first. And so it also talks about the Turkish um empire and how they also loved tulips and but they liked a different type and anyway uh really cool lots of history I love history so that was great um and if you like history and you like flowers then it's perfect okay so those are two that I've already read I will tell you one that I DNF'd I did not finish this one is called Four Eids and a Funeral I got an advanced reader's copy when I went to the London Book Fair um it is a YA romance I DNF'd it, not because it was bad or anything, but because it just wasn't my thing. Um, so I'll talk about it more when I do the wrap up for my spring reading, but that is one that was on there. Then, oh, I did, so now I get to dig into these books sitting back here. So I'm partway through Homegoing by Ya Diasi. Um, this one is about two families, I guess you could. So it was like two sisters in, I believe the 1800s, early 1800s, if not late 1700s, um, on the Gold Coast, on the Ivory Coast of Africa. Um, they're sisters, but they don't know that they're sisters. And one, her family and descendants stay in Africa and the other ends up in slavery in America. And so it just traces you know, you just get snippets of their stories, you know, like a chapter of each person's life. Um, and very handily, they have a uh, a chart, like a family tree, because otherwise, 
um, it would be very, very confusing. Um, so I'm working on that one right now. Then I'm also working on Emily Wilde's map of the other lands. In winter, I read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, and I love Heather Fawcett, and I really enjoyed Cyclop Encyclopedia of Fairies, so I had to grab this one. It is recently out, and I think then the paper back version just came out, so I grabbed that one, and I'll tell you about that later. Then I've also got this one is Remarkably Bright Creatures. This is also for another book club that I'm in. I have absolutely no idea what it's about. I haven't even read the back. But you know what the book said book club said read it so i'm gonna read it it's got an octopus with a, a swiffer and um some bubbles on the front so it's gonna be great right so i'm just gonna go with it sometimes i like to just jump into books without knowing anything about them sometimes i like to research and know like this is exactly what i want to read but sometimes i'm just like you know what go for it see what happens and that's a just see what happens kind of book then i have a bunch that i may or may not get to read so I, if you don't know, run pop-up bookshops in my town. Um, and so these books are basically I have purchased. Um, they will go into the pop-up shop in a couple days. And if they don't sell, then I get to read them. This is my, <laughs> maybe this isn't the best business practice. Um, but I buy them kind of for myself. And then if other people enjoy them, that's great. And they grab them, then I'll find something else to read. But if they don't, then I get to. Um, and those include Lies We Sing to the Sea. Now, I don't really know much about this one. I just know that it's kind of like Greek mythology. It's a YA. I've been listening to Greeking Out with my daughter. It's a podcast made for kids um, from National Geographic. And so and now I'm like very intrigued by Greek stuff. And so this is, I don't know, could be fun. Um, I am super excited, and I might just keep this one for myself and not even offer it up. Um, so this is called The Secret in the Tower. This one I saw when I was at the London Book Fair a couple weeks ago. It is um, a tale of medieval England. So I don't know if you know the story about the two princes and the Tudor princes in England in the, I want to say 1500s. So they got like they were in line for the throne um, and they kind of just disappeared into the Tower of London and they were never seen again and they think that they were murdered. And so this is a middle grade book uh, inspired or has something to do with that. So I'm, oh yeah, 1485. So a little bit earlier than I thought. Um, so that's this one. And then the second one I also saw, it's about the plague and... I can't, you can't go wrong with the plague. So I'm excited to read this one and then the next one as well. Um, another one that I saw a lot on Instagram and online and stuff is A Tempest of Tea. It's about tea, illegal blood house by night, and some vampires, high stakes underworld. I mean, just sounds fun. I gotta go with it. Why not? <laughs> Tempest of Tea. Um, and then... The last one is Lore of the Wilds. This looks, just looks cool. Um, and it says, would you like to know how to capture the moonlight and wield it for yourself? How about which mushrooms will give you the strength of a hundred men and which will put 100 to sleep with just one taste to never be subjected to the dark again? Would you like to know if your loved ones are safe all those miles away? I don't know. Sounds intriguing. Sounds cool. It looks like we've got maybe we, um, you know, some more diversity in here. So I'm interested to see what, how that maybe influences the story. Perhaps that there's a little bit more going on than just the um, Western European lore. I don't know, but it looks cool. And so those are all the books. <laughs> those are all the books that I'm going to read in spring. Now we'll see if I get to all of those. These are what I want to read in spring, but you know, uh, that doesn't always happen the way you plan things. So, um, what are you reading this spring? Uh, leave in the comments. Let me know. I want to hear what you guys are interested in reading and, uh, like, and subscribe if you want more of my silly shenanigans and my really eclectic reading tastes.